You might have heard that the CPI data is coming in today, but you might not be totally aware of how it affects the markets or even what it actually is. Well, by the end of this video, you will have at least a good grasp on what the CPI data tells us and how you can use it in relation to your trading and investing. Hi, I'm Bicky Crypto and welcome to what is the CPI data report and how does it affect the market? And in this one, I'm going to try my best to prepare you for the most volatile event, especially in this month of March 2023, which is the CPI data report. This is going to be an inflation metric that the Fed will be looking at directly and indirectly to determine the next FOMC rate hike if it's needed or not. We're going to jump right into it because we've got a lot to discuss here. All I ask from you is if you could do me a big, big favor in return, and that is to hit the like button, subscribe, and of course, hit the notification bell. Now for this video, I've got a like count target, which is around 30 likes. This is just over the highest I've had since my return. So if you like this content today, please let's help get it there. Of course, it goes without saying, we have to put in the disclaimer here. So please pause it and read it and understand it. Nothing that I say in this video is of financial advice. It's just my own opinions, thoughts, and experiences. If you are looking for financial advice, please seek and pay a professional to do so. So before we get started, let's go back to basics. What is the CPI data report? Today, we're gonna to be having a fresh read on inflation in the form of CPI. This will help inform the Fed's decision on whether or not to raise interest rates. But let's take a quick step back here. What does CPI actually mean? and how does it measure inflation? Well, CPI stands for Consumer Price Index, as defined by the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. The CPI is the measurement of monthly change in prices paid by US consumers. Now, the index tracks up to 100,000 goods and services per month. Key categories that they include are areas like housing, food, transportation, and apparel. The Bureau of Labor Statistics, commonly known as the BLS, gives each category a relative importance based on a survey of what consumers buy. There is approximately 450 workers at the BLS and they're responsible for tracking all of the prices that they see in around 8,000 households, which is what they're tracking these across. So now to make sure products haven't changed in price too much, they compare products. Let's take eggs, for example, to a list of data points from the months before. That means these BLS workers are tracking the price of eggs from past months based on things like its size, brand, and labeling. When the prices eclipse their prior levels over an extended period of time, the Fed may conclude that there is a persistent price pressure in the economy. And in an economy that is too first driven by consumption, Data points gathered as part of the Consumer Price Index provide policymakers a read into the health of the economy with relation to their own goal of price stability. So let's now take a look at the last CPI report and I've got a chart here to kind of go over what went up and what went down to make it easier for you to look at rather than looking at the BLS report. This is what's going to be really important to understand what is going to be affecting us next time. We essentially have to look at the past to understand the future. So looking at month on month, the only thing that went up was our core CPI by the way, which is CPI data, less food and energy. And that was mainly due to the fact that shelter and transportation services went up. And this is of course, this is services, less energy services that went up, which caused the core CPI to go up. Everything else went down or was pretty much flat, which is very good to look at. Now we want to take a look at year over year. Year over year was a little bit more of a mixed bag. Food at home and away from home was a little bit split. Food at home went down, but food away from home went up. Electricity went up, whereas everything else in the energy sector kind of came down or was flat as well commodities new vehicles all these guys came down apparel went up and then shelter went up significantly again which is crazy because shelter is becoming quite a problem to say the least due to the price of rent the renting market is getting hot again so that's kind of what we have to watch out for really the rental markets as well that aside to summarize i've got a cool little infographic here if you want to kind of see all the categories and everything broken down you can see that it services and gasoline both went down but everything else is kind of tending to go up in terms of inflation causing the economy its pain that it's in right now and overall inflation as you can see here in blue is at six percent the things causing the most inflation are of course housing at 8.2 percent food at restaurants which is food away from home that we mentioned before uh, has gone up to 8.4 percent rent as well as we discussed has gone up to 8.8 percent household energy i.e electrical services at 12.9 percent and airfare part of the transportation services at a whopping 26.5 percent so now let's take a look at what analysts are expecting in terms of estimates of this and then we'll also have a quick look briefly at some charting analysis as well so as you can see here i've got forex factory opened up and this is on the calendar section so you can see uh, all the data that is being released this week of course the reason for today's video is this month's cpi data for the month of march in 2023 of course in case you're watching this at a later date and this data release is happening on march 12th which is wednesday today if you're watching this video today and this data will be released at 8 30 a.m eastern standard time or 1 30 p.m gmt right before the markets open 
Again, I'm just mentioning this, if you're watching this video at a later month or even a year, here's hoping. <laughs> so for the core CPI, as I've already explained, which is everything minus food and energy, the market and analysts have a forecast of it coming down to a 0.4%, which is really good. I like to see that. The core for year on year is however expected to go up. I understand that because shelter services are going up. This makes sense to me. CPI regular year over year is forecasted to come down to 5.1% and our CPI month over month is set to come in at 0.2%. The core going up year over year is probably going to cause some heartburn and pain in the stock market and people might not like that because core CPI is what's been sticky lately. Well, the services inflation has been sticky. One thing that is important to be aware of is that CPI is a result that can have a one to three day lag as well. Doesn't mean that the markets won't react initially, but the markets can take their time overall to settle with the data. So let's take a quick look at some charts, uh, just in case you're watching this in real time, i.e. in the month of March, expecting the data to be released soon or it's already been released. We can see Bitcoin, of course, did its massive move up to over 30K. It got to over 30 and a half. Now we are, again, as I said in a previous analysis video, at a heavy point of control. And today's data could be very, very vital to how Bitcoin is gonna react. If we're going to see Bitcoin head up to this even heavier point of control, then of course this data could potentially push this price up. But let's look at the S&P 500, which to be honest, a lot of the traditional finance guys are going to be looking at very, very heavily based on the data released today. And we can see that we're just over 4,100. The important thing to note here, of course, other than the fact that we're on an uptrend on the one hour time frame, is we can see we've got a couple of gaps here. Now, gaps don't always necessarily need to be taken, but they pretty much do. And they pretty much always are, right? If you can see here, this gap was taken, of course, at a much later date. But the short term, you can see this gap was taken here. This gap was taken here. This gap was taken and the gaps are pretty much taken pretty, pretty quickly. Again, this gap here. So the gaps that we've got in question, especially if we're going to see the market, the S&P 500 go down is going to be this gap here. And if we really do see a drastic price drop, then we've also got this zone here. This isn't really a zone of gap because of course the wicks took it out. Now again, this is on the basis that the price does go down. Of course, the price can go up and we're going to be looking at what the financial institutions are looking at for that to happen. So let's move straight on to that. So talking about the expectations of financial institutions, and according to Goldman Sachs, this is the expectations on how the market will react. Now you can read this report here on Bloomberg itself, but I'm gonna summarize it out for you. Although this is what Goldman Sachs are expecting to happen, it doesn't necessarily mean it will happen, but it is important to take these expectations on when it comes to our own confidences and decision-making when trading the market. So before we go into this, let's just remember what the forecasts are in regards to the CPI year on year, and it's 5.1%. Goldman Sachs are basically saying that if the CPI data report comes in greater than 6%, then the S&P 500 will look to sell off at least 2%, which means as well, by the way, that NASDAQ will most likely sell off for a little bit more. If the data comes out between 5.2 and 6%, then that's not in as expected, but that's in between 5.2 to 6%. So that's still seeing a drop of inflation, but not expected. We should see a 1% to 2% sell-off. If the data comes in between 4.6 or 5.1, meaning then less than people expected or less than the market expected, the stock market will rally up anywhere between 0.5 and 1%. And of course, lastly, if the data reading comes in below 4.6%, then we should see the S&P 500 rally up at least 2%. Again, as I mentioned, this doesn't necessarily mean all of this will happen based on the readings, but it is important to take in this kind of data. Again, to reiterate the entire market, the huge banking institutions all believe that we will come in lower than expected at 5.1%. So why am I making this video? Well, I want you to understand first off, what is the CPI data and how is it being calculated? But of course, I also want you to understand what analysts and what banking institutions are expecting, especially for today's CPI data report. Now, at the end of the day, no one can predict the future. These are all just estimates. But again, everyone is expecting for this report to come in lower than expected. So we can see here that the last report did come in lower than expected. It's just going to be very interesting to see if we actually come in higher than expected this time. And then does that mean most of these banking institutions are wrong? Which leads on to then how is the Federal Reserve going to react? We have a very interesting week ahead of us. And again, I'm just excited to bring you guys along with this information, with this data, and to keep you guys up to date so you don't have to do all the work yourselves. As always, thank you all so much for watching this video. I appreciate the fact that you've taken the time out to watch this video. And I hope you've actually learned something and I've provided you with some insight 
into today's topic. If you've got any questions, please do let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know what you think is going to happen with the CPI data and what could happen with the markets over the next couple of days. It's always good to hear your insight. As always, please remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and don't forget to try and help us get to at least 30 likes for this video today. You can also find me on Twitter and on TikTok. There's two platforms that I'm now experimenting with, trying to get some conversations going, as well as Telegram, which is a group that I used to have before. It'd be good to get the conversation going there as well. And you can find all of my links if you click here to my campsite, which will bring you to my link page. And here you can find all of the platforms and things that I've used or are using at the moment to help you navigate through the space of Forex and crypto. With all that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of the day and I'll catch you on the next one.